Today we're going to design a banner stand together, all the way from concepting and working with the client's brand guidelines all the way to print. Hi creatives, my name is Malin and today we're going to design a banner stand for a brand called Framtidskontoret. This means the future office in Swedish and they're a co-working space for sustainable companies. Let's start with the specs for the project itself. So this project, we're doing a banner that's going to be 80 centimeters wide and 200 centimeters tall. And the bottom 30 centimeters is a sort of safe zone for where the banner can be rolled into the holder. The printer that we're choosing to use also needs a five millimeter bleed. And since it will be print, we want to set up a PDF in Adobe Illustrator with CMYK settings and 300 dpi to make sure the quality is really good. First I thought we could have just a quick peek at the brand guidelines to understand a bit more of the visual style of this brand overall. So what I want to look for is any sort of visual language elements like these little swirls, how the layout works and the photography style that we have throughout. Things like colors and how they're combining elements is also super interesting. So the very first thing I do when I design any type of print is to start by putting all the information in first. And here I'm not really worrying about the typefaces or about anything like that. I just want to get the hierarchy right. So if there are social media icons, if there's a website address, if there's photos that they really want to have, I put all of it in and I try to create some sort of hierarchy that will help me understand if I'm standing really far away, will I see the right information if it is laid out in this way. I don't worry too much about the design or the layout at this time, I just want to have everything in the documents. When you're designing a banner stand, you really have to think about the situation that it's going to be used in. So in most conferences, you'll be able to see like the top of the banner stand really well from afar, but a lot of the kind of midsection to lower section will usually be blocked by people walking by or even by like boxes or other things that can be happening in a conference as well. So we want to make sure that we're putting the key information right at the kind of top eye level and then we can put secondary information in the kind of medium height and anything that is good to have like a website address, a social media icon or additional photography, we can put that underneath so it's part of a really pretty design but it's not something that is a big deal if we don't see as someone walking past. Next up, we can start to think about more visual elements. So if there's photography that we want to include that we haven't already, if there's, let's say, different visual language elements that we want to include, like a swoosh or background colors or patterns or things like that, iconography, this is something we want to include at this stage, just to kind of get an idea of how that could all fit together. Here is, of course, really good to consult the brand guide to see if there are any kind of layout preferences that the brand has, just to make sure that we're keeping consistent. Since banner stands can be quite large, like one to two meters tall, we also really want to make sure that the images are high enough resolution. So we want to make sure that we are working in the artboard size that we're going to eventually be exporting in. And then if you pull it out to the size where you need it, then you can make sure that it doesn't look pixelated. Now, in some cases, clients just have a few pictures and they're not that high resolution. And in that case, what I like to do is I try to use layout as a way to use the images in a smaller size than if they would, let's say, take up like the whole width of the banner. So if you end up in that situation, try to look for a way to incorporate them in a smaller size in the format that you have. So now that everything is in the document and we have looked at the brand guys, we have a kind of idea of the general visual language. We want to try to just get a bunch of layout ideas down. So either you can do this in black and white, that's what I like to do sometimes, just to kind of um, disconnect all of those little minute choices that you want to make and just get a layout that you really enjoy and that you think would work well for the brand. Once you have the design ready that you're really excited to start using and sending to the client, you want to make sure that you're embedding all of the different images and you're outlining all of the text. And if you have lines or other things, we want to make sure we expand those shapes as well. And this is just so that when the printer opens the document, there's no missing photography, there's no typefaces that they don't have, because you want to make sure that they can open it, make any adjustments that they have to, or put it into their programs to make sure it prints exactly as it's intended. I'm going to intersect a little good advice here, and that is to also have as part of your contract with your clients that you are not responsible for what happens in the printing process. 
So at this stage, you want to make sure that you're asking your client to properly proof everything that you've done. Even if you copy pasted all of the text from a document that they sent you, make sure that they proofread it. Are there any spelling mistakes? Did something fall away when you were working with it? Maybe the text box you used was just a little bit too small and the last line fell away. All of these things can happen, so we really want to make sure that everything is there, you've understood the brief correctly and your client has proofed everything. Once we send it to the printer, once they have approved it, and the printer should give you a press proof and make sure that they look it through and everything looks good. If they need you to make any changes, they'll let you know and you can just make those adjustments. When I'm presenting the work to my client, I like to be able for them to visualize it. So whenever you and I see a design on a PDF, it might feel very obvious to us how that's going to appear. But for someone who isn't used to looking at design work, it can be really good to use a mock-up. So what I like to do is to send the PDF as it will be printed. And I also like to include a mock-up of what it could look like. So this way you've really shown them this is what I'm intending it to be and this is the file for you to proof. If you like this type of design with me video, I think you'll really enjoy me creating a brand for a vegan food company from scratch. I'll put that here on the screen so you can watch that next. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your projects.